later. Thank you for coming this afternoon. You know I mean? And we're going to get started with <laughs> Melinda. And if you just want to come on up, I'll pray and then we'll get started. Awesome. So, Lord, we thank you so much for this day, the opportunity to get to be in your presence on this Good Friday. Hallelujah. So much significance to this day and why we um, just celebrate this day, Lord. It's I had a great honor and a privilege to be a part of, yeah, your family and your kingdom, Lord. And we thank you so much for this school and what, how it's going to equip people to learn more about you and your plan for us as your family, God. So we thank you and I just pray for Melinda now as she is bringing more information and more just insight into the DBS, Lord. I pray for clear communication. I pray that our hearts and our minds would be open to receive this information and that we understand how to implement it yeah. and how to yeah. use it wisely and effectively so that it can help us as staff and the students Amen. as they are growing in their relationship with you, Lord. Amen. We give you this time. In name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Amen. Angie. Amen. Thanks, Angie. You are welcome. Okay, so today, pulling up my staff training schedule. Today we're just going to be looking at um, how we came to the outcomes. So remember I made that list of A, B, C, D, E, F on the board here, and those were the core things. And then those are outcomes, and we're going to talk about how we came to some of those outcomes, and specifically how we created a curriculum, and then how we're going to look at that curriculum throughout the school to see if it's happening in, in the lives of our students. Okay, and that we're going to call that assessment, and we're going to talk a little bit about assessment and how do you then look at the things of knowledge, skills, and character, and how does that work? for like grading and how does that work for uh, seeing people succeed and getting to that goal right and so um, yeah that's pretty much what we're gonna look at so I've got these documents for you these are basically the assessment packets so this is the curriculum in a very fancy laid out form you're gonna have to share yeah I only printed out like so that you could look with someone else because what's gonna happen is these are gonna remain digital so that you don't have to carry one of these around for every student could you imagine 50 packets or 60 packets like this that would just be uh, a logistical nightmare so these would these will be in a folder on a Google Drive that you will be able to access there'll be one for each student um, is everybody able to see one? <coughs> you might, I might be able to give you this one in a minute later. Yeah, maybe you guys should come together. There we go. So all this does is, remember how we talked about, okay, so if you flip over on the first page, all this document does is help us to know how we are doing as staff, actually. Okay, so it's not necessarily about uh, how well the student is doing but how well are we helping the student understand and get to these places right so remember yesterday I briefly introduced that assessment is just making sure these are the goals that we have for the school so we want them to be able to know God in his word his, uh, his redemptive plan we want to be able to know uh, and re read the whole Bible. We want them to be able to contribute to community. We want them to be able to uh, express the values of worship, intercession through the word, so forth and so on, right? We have all these goals or outcomes that we want to see happen through uh, the training and the lectures and small groups and so forth. So those are the vehicles that are going to take us there, right? Lectures are going to take us there. Small group times are going to take us there. Worship is going to take us there. Everything that is incorporated in the school is going to take us toward our goals. And this packet just helps us to know where are we at? Where are we at as a, as a student? Where's that student at? And how can I help facilitate them and get them to this place? Because the object uh, is that everybody would arrive at the goal 
Okay, that's the that's the whole thing. So it doesn't matter how fast you get there. It doesn't matter um, how slow you get there. It doesn't matter if someone does it better than you. Um, because that's not how we actually assess, and that's not how the kingdom of God, that's not how we're assessing the kingdom of God, right? What I understand from scripture is that it's brother, 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 right? The whole thing, first shall be last, last shall be first, that's equality, right? It doesn't matter if I've been serving God my whole life or if I'm hanging next to Jesus on the cross and, and I'm asking to be forgiven, that makes me brother, right? Or sister, okay, if we want to go TNIV, but anyway. Um, the point is, is that there's equality, right? And so in education systems, many people have been hurt by the fact that education systems, specifically university systems, are arranged to fail people. That's what we're looking for. We are looking for, most education systems are looking at how to fail you. Okay, what you're not doing, not what are you doing. Okay, so... I don't know about you guys, but in the Western education system, I grew up it, with that mentality. If you cannot do this box, and you cannot fulfill whatever that is, so memorize this, produce this test, uh, make this thing happen somehow, then that equals fail. Right? Anybody, anybody experience a little bit of that? I was deeply wounded by that because that is not how I learn. I'm not, I, I just wasn't gifted. I didn't learn how to learn in school. In fact, I didn't learn how to learn until I got into my Bible school. I didn't even learn how to, I didn't even know Paul went on missionary journeys before I did my Bible school in YWAM, okay? Just, just didn't have any frame of reference for that kind of stuff. But I was really good with my hands, really good with lots of other ways. And now you'd be like, oh, I can't even believe she would be like that. Um, but I didn't know how to learn. And so what happened is not, no, there was this system that was broken that was saying you're not the best therefore you will amount to nothing you're not in this top 10 percent therefore you are not valid you do not count where you want to go it doesn't matter and that's not the kingdom of god okay that's not the kingdom of god the kingdom of god is we are all moving towards somewhere and in this DBS, we're moving towards the things that God has called us, or the words of the Lord, that target, right? So the values of YWAM, the U of N, all those things, we are moving towards those goals. So the question is, how are we going to get there? How are we going to help our students succeed? Okay, not, oh, you didn't show up on time, fail. You didn't hand your homework in on time, fail. Right? That's the model that we've been modeled. Okay? But it's not about pass-fail. Okay? It's about can you do it and how can I help you do it? How can I help you get there? How can I help you know God through His Word? How can I help you understand the character and nature of God? How can I, you know, move you through that process of contributing to community? So when we're assessing people, it's good to use an analogy like this. I'm going to train you how to study the Bible, okay? So it'd be like training you to ride a bicycle. Everybody in here had to learn how to ride a bicycle. Some of you are better at it than others. Some of you can ride further than others. But maybe we're in a different kind of bicycle training course where you're going to be learning how to do racing. Okay, anybody in here do, does long distance bike racing? No, me neither. That's ridiculous. Who would do that? <laughs> Nobody would do that. Okay. Yeah, people do that all the yeah. time. I see them. I'm like, you're ridiculous. Do you know you live on a mountain? You go up, up. Okay, yeah. Right? But there's different skill set required for that kind of training and knowing how to do that. There's a different skill set. There's even different clothes. There's different shoes. Everything is different, right? And so first you need the knowledge how to actually, this is how you click in your shoe in one of those fancy pedals because that's not a pedal. That's like a little bar and you have to like click your shoe in, right? Okay, that's weird, right? So there's mechanic stuff that deals with that. There's the knowledge, right, of your, your interpersonal body self. And then there's also your mental, mental toughness when competing and things like that. It's the same set of skills, right, that we're working on with here. We're going to teach them not that they have to be an expert Bible teacher by the end, but they have to reach this goal. This is the goal of DBS. That's where we're going. Everybody's coming along. 
somebody's going to get there faster than others, that's okay. Let's, you know, let's continue to challenge. Let's go further than that then, okay? Or if you're there, help others get there. Let's all go there together. So it, it's not a comparison thing. And that's really, it was hard for me in the beginning because I had grown up being taught that comparison was the way for education, right? Here's one student, little Timmy's so much better than little Bobby over here. Bobby gets an F, Timmy gets an A, right? Timmy's smarter, comparing. Timmy and Bobby. We're not comparing. We're saying, where are you at? And how can I help you as a, as a human that God loves, as my brother, sister? How can I help you move to these goals? Okay, so these were the goals. That's how you use this document. And, and to me, as, a, as an educator, that's liberating. As a staff, that's liberating. Okay, it's so freeing. As a student, that's freeing. I'm not being judged on somebody else's standard. I'm being looked at for me and how, how, I'm, how I'm learning. How do I learn? How do I grow? How can I get to the end? So there are various ways that we look for these things. Okay, so it's not just written only. Um, because this is a group community looking like school where we have lots of opportunities for interaction, there are many different ways to, to see that somebody is doing something. Okay, and what you would be looking for, there's observation. So that's like, man, I observed that you uh, were super generous and, and bought John a coffee the other day, and then you really affirmed him, and I can see that. Yeah, I saw that happen. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Like, I see Greg's heart. Like, he has the spirit of hospitality and generosity and encouragement. I see him operating in that, right? Okay, that's observation. Or... Um, I saw you uh, ask these questions, right? I heard, I saw, I, I saw that. One-on-one -on -one communication, so anything in your one-on-one, -on -one, right? All that counts. Uh, small group times, anything that happens in your small group. Man, so-and-so was really contributing. They were asking such good questions. They were tracking along. Love that. Yes, they're doing such a great job with that. Maybe I see that somebody else isn't engaged, so I want to ask, hey, are you, are you really engaged? Yeah, I'm so engaged. This is great. Um, do you have any questions? Yeah, I've written down a whole sheet of questions. Okay, the, the engagement looks different. Okay, but that's how that person, that's where we're going to, as, as people who are assessing, we're going to begin to learn those things about our students and be able to draw them out and not make them look like the person who's talking all the time, but actually see how people do things differently and highlight that and encourage that and bring that into our little community. So small group demonstrations or presentations, that can be anything where like if they're leading, uh, maybe they're, they're leading the small group, okay? That's a presentation or a demonstration. They're demonstrating some kind of skill or demonstrating an aspect of character. Written assignments. Very easy, we all know what those look like. That's a way that people can express what they know and what they understand. And then ministry applications. Uh, what people, um, how they respond in ministry application times. Um, do we see them engaging, so forth and so on. And so these are the way, these are things that you can use to help bring clarity to, to know where people are at in that way. Now, that's a lot of communication stuff, okay? So we need to be helping one another. Like, I, John, I totally saw Jeremiah doing this stuff. I know that you're covering Jeremiah. He was amazing the other day. He was, I saw him wiping all the tables. Even though the cafe's closed, he was out there wiping all the bird poop off because he just cares for the community and cares for the base. Like, he was out there. You know what I mean? I just wanted to tell you that I saw that because it was amazing. I just was super blessed, right? Jeremiah, awesome, right? So the point of this is to help us to know what to look for, okay? And to know what to look for, to know what actually, where are we going, what are we looking for, okay? A lot of these are going to be things that can't be assessed until the end, okay? So if I assessed my students in week one on analyzing a passage of scripture, what would happen to everybody in our school? They would not be able to do it. They don't fail. That was a trick question. Okay. It means that they're not able to do that yet. 
Okay, so what's your job? If at the end of week one they're not able to do that, what's your job? Not to fail them. Eh, loser. Yeah, right? Out of here. No, your job is to say, you know what, how can I actually help them next week move a step closer to that? Okay, that's where our responsibility as staff comes in. How are they doing with that? Do they have the things from this first week? And that's why we made that outcomes every week so that you know how we're going to move through to get to these. Some of these are end goals. Okay, like analyzing a passage of scripture, that's an end goal. We don't have the expectation for them to be able to do that straight away. Otherwise, they wouldn't need to take the school. Okay, we have the expectation for them to be able to do that at the end. Okay, but so our job is to be looking at, are they moving towards that and will they make it by the end of the 12 weeks? Because well, all we've got is 12 weeks to help them get there. Right? Am I being deliberate in helping them move that direction? Okay? And that's where small groups is so important because a lot of the things that aren't done in lectures are covered then in small groups and that's where the mechanics right of some of this stuff happens directly and so the, the questions that we're asking is well if we say that one of the key things of the school is to analyze the passage of scripture what does that mean where are the boundaries for that okay what does it look like to be able to analyze the passage of scripture for the dbs because every Bible school in YWAM has a different understanding of what that means for their school. Okay, so for DBS, it means they use the inductive study methodology for analyzing a passage. Okay, does that mean, does that mean that they have to do that like an SBS student? No way, Jose. Okay, that's not the goal. It means do they, do they know what observation questions are? Do they know what interpretation questions are? Do they know what application questions are? And can they facilitate leading people through that? Then the answer, yeah, check, right? Can they actually do something like that? And that's where we're leading them and training them. And that's where those outcomes help us to understand. Can they identify a principle from a passage of scripture? Right, so analyzation of a scripture, one of the things that, in order to do that, you have to be able to come to principles. Right, so those things we're going to be teaching, modeling, demonstrating, and then we want them to actually do that. We're going to be teaching them how, modeling how to do that, showing what it looks like, getting there. Then, compared, com can they compare the identified principle with other biblical principles to make sure it's consistent? That's it. Okay, that's all we're asking for this first skill. Those are the boundaries for that. Okay, and what you wanna do is you don't wanna just see that happen once. What we're asking is that the student would be consistent at doing that. Does that make sense? Consistent. So like, I can do, I can ride my bike once. Yeah, I can shakily, right, on my bike, <laughs> wobbling down the thing, but can I do it again? And can I keep doing it? Because the thing is, is we don't equip them to be able to keep doing this after the course. Not just like, I did it once, yeah, that's it. Like, but are we equipping them for after our school? And that's really, the, that's beyond the goal, that's what we wanna see accomplished, is them feeling successful and capable of doing these amazing things, right? We want them to examine personal worldview. So how does my worldview match up with biblical worldview, does it? Have I ever thought of that? and we're gonna hopefully move them in that direction through that time, okay? So if you see here, these are the skills that help tell whether or not this person can do all of A, right? Continual Bible, that's the overall goal. These are the skills that are required for a person to be able to be continually developing the Bible in their life. And so all we did was ask questions. What would be, what would be necessary? What would we want people to be able to do? What would we be able to see so that we know that they can do it? And that's where this information came from. And that's why they either can or they can't do it, right? And then there's some evidence that you write here, okay? I saw them consistently doing this through their homework. I've seen it in their, I've observed it in small groups. I have, and so you use those methods here. In one-on-ones, they communicated to me very clearly that they understood that. 
So I've seen it communicate, uh, they've communicated to me, I've seen them operate in it, and they also showed me in their homework. Does that make sense? So three different ways I've seen them do it. Now, do they have to show me in three different ways? No, they can tell me, and then later I can ask them and they can tell me again as long as I'm seeing it, right? And they can also tell me again, and that's still consistent, right? So you can use a combo of these ways or you can use one specific way. Some people are really great at showing it on their homework, right? Some people are really great at talking about it. Some people are really great at modeling and demonstrating it, okay? And that's where we highlight different people's skills and gifts because not everybody can express themselves the same way. So we want to give them the most opportunity to actually do it. And we want to help them be able to do it. And so that's what this is for. That's why we give these guidelines. Are, where are they in this process? And so this is for us to figure out where are they? What can they do and what can't they do yet? If this is what they need to be able to do, then where are they missing it so that I can come in and help, right? So that I can make sure that I'm giving them the training and the skills and the quality that I told them I was gonna give them as a school leader. Okay, so that's how this document works. So these, this, this stuff here is the skill-based stuff and all this is mainly looking at can they do the things that we're asking them to do? And then, if you keep flipping through, discovering God in the biblical narrative, and you'll see in the second one, communicating God's redemptive plan. One of the things that's helpful, like I said, is for them to be able to do it multiple times. So the question is, has the student shared, shared God's redemptive plan on three occasions to different audiences? Okay, so why am I asking that they do it to different audiences? Because I, I need to know that they can do it outside of this little group. Yeah? Maybe they're doing it in uh, a, a Thursday meeting. They, they're like, oh man, dude, I'm learning God's redemptive plan. This is so good. And they're sharing it with those, their friends around them. Or maybe we set up a time for them. Or maybe they're going out in the community and we're out Bible reading and somebody asks them and then they begin freely sharing. Right? So what we're doing is we're trying to see it, again, consistent when there's things like that that need to be multiple times, that's why we're asking for different audiences. Are people able to contextualize it? Or do they only know how to do that within YWAM? Right? Because we're training people to be world changers, to go beyond just Kona, to go beyond YWAM. Man, you don't, I don't even know where these students are going to end up. Let's give them the opportunity. Let's make the opportunity for them to be able to, to be equipped in all these different settings. Okay? Um, and then you'll keep going through. I just really quickly want to show you the facilitating small group one because I really feel like this is where we're going to be modeling a lot of this stuff as small group leaders. Okay, so it's real simple. To facilitate a small group, you need to prepare, you need to do it, and you need to review it. That's all we're asking people to do. Prepare, facilitate it, and review it. And and then there's opportunities here to discuss how that works. Okay, so did they do these things? Am I doing these things? This would be really good for you to look at to make sure that you understand your role as a small group leader is to prepare, run it, and review how you did. So meaning review like, hey guys, in my small group, is this teaching okay? I mean, it's, it's hot in here this afternoon. Um, is this interactive enough? You know, like, can I make some adjustments tomorrow to help you guys learn better? You know, what, what are we doing well? What needs to be done differently? Is everybody feeling connected? You know, those kinds of review questions. Uh, or was the content too difficult today? Like, how can I make this simpler? Feedback. That's all we're asking for. And just what that does is contributes to community and contributes to their learning and making sure that you're actually helping them understand. Okay, a key thing here is uh, that they're doing it according to the inductive study. That's, that's again underpinning this whole thing. And then um, are, they, are they actually going to review it? And so this would be more to the end of, of the school where they're doing their practicals. But we want to make sure that we're modeling it. And so that's why I'm drawing your attention to it because it's something that we're going to be modeling. Are we, are we doing this so that we can model that that's what they're going to do? Any, any quick questions about that? Any thoughts so far? 
Any, is it, is it clear? Is this, do you understand how, how this works? Okay. Okay, and then if you keep going, there's uh, contributing to ongoing formation of community. This would also be really great for you to be modeling as staff, where everybody should be modeling contrib contribution to community. Um, so are we listening to the Holy Spirit on behalf of the community? Are we reflecting the awareness of the community? Accepting diversity in community? Um, communicating effectively? Resolving misunderstandings? Contributing to actively building community? And that's, that's how that one works. And then there's different things that help us to know whether or not the student is able to do that. Yeah? And we want to also be doing that too. So things like conflict resolution, things like um, awareness. Yeah, how, do, how am I actually contributing to the DBS? How am I contributing to my small group? How am I contributing to Kona? How am I contributing to YWAM? Like all that, those levels with the values and all that stuff that we've been talking about, that's where uh, contributing to community, we really have to model that so that these guys can pick it up so that when they go as well, they can create this community and we're gonna have a big community. Yeah, it's gonna be like 70 of us in this room. And so there'll be plenty of opportunities to contribute to community. We just need to be aware that we're modeling that all the time because this is what we're gonna expect them to do. Yeah, we have, this is our goal. So that doesn't mean we have to be perfect. Okay, it doesn't have to be a big heavy weight. We're all moving together and that's the cool thing Again, it's not a comparison. It's we're moving in this direction, right? That's the goal. As a, as a, at, by the end, we want to have community. We want to have this thing established. We want to see people being able to, to talk to one another if there's a problem. We want to see, uh, you know, we want to see everybody integrated. We don't want a little Korean section inside of our school. And, and you know, it's, we don't want things segregated. We want, again, this whole, wholeness. And this is how we can help get there. Because we had to figure out what are boundaries? How do you do that? What are things that do that? And this is where we put up some, some boundaries for that, okay? And then finally, you can see there's two in the back here for E, incorporating prayer worship. This is like, do I see people engaging in worship? Um, has the student demonstrated an integration of intercession and prayer in overall activities? It says missions activities. We're a missions base. That's why it says that, right? So we're training people to be missionaries. Um, demonstrating a response to God's strategy and direction in intercession. So if I was like, what was God saying to you through the Easter thing this morning? Like, or what do you feel like God was saying to the corporate through, through the Easter? You know, I would want to have a discussion on that. How is God leading our community through the corporate Easter uh, Good Friday service. Like, what are some things that God was doing corporately? How can I integrate that into my small group? How can I integrate that into the class time, right? How can I consider what God is doing corporately and help people and ask them, hey, what did you get out of Easter you know, service today? And, and you guys did that naturally when we came in. We were having conversations about that. Jeremiah was like, wasn't that so cool? And like, right? Naturally. That, that happens, and so it's not like it's something that they're being forced, we're just identifying what are things, what does that look like, right? How does that actually look, and how can we help facilitate that in our students' lives? Uh, spiritual warfare, engaging in worship as part of ministry. Now, there's some things that say no less than eight weeks. That's the U of N guidelines. That's where those values are being shown up here. It says no less than eight weeks. Meaning that that's the U of N guideline for consistency in this standard for every course in the University of the Nations. So if you don't do eight weeks of that, uh, if it takes you six weeks to get engaged, no, just kidding. But I'm saying like, the reality is what the, it means that the school is providing that level minimally for eight weeks. And that's why that's there. So there's just some communication for why that's there. Then additionally, you can look here in the character values it calls Christian values and character and attitude beside that. You can never assess someone's character. It's not possible, okay? We're not called to assess people's character. But we are called to observe the attitude with which we do things and help each other in those ways, right? So if I come to my small group and everybody there is having a really hard time, some girl's crying, 
I'm not just going to be like, okay, well, open your Bibles. We're going to read. Right? Obviously, there's something happening that I want to walk through with them. Okay? And, and I may misread her attitude. Okay? I cannot assess attitude without asking questions. Right? And we practiced that yesterday with the one-on-ones. We need to ask questions because we don't know. And so we need to ask questions to help people. We need to provide a safe environment for that. And we're not looking to be like, your attitude sucks. Right? What we're doing is we're looking for where people are, <laughs> where people are excelling and how can I again bring them along. I want, I want people to love the Bible to have a good character. I want Jesus to be represented well in that way. Right? I'm jealous for God to have a good name. Yeah? So I don't want students to go away from a school that I'm a part of with a really bad attitude towards the Bible or towards God or anything like that and I want to walk with them alongside that. Maybe they have some hurt, right? How can I help move them one or two steps, right? And one of the things that's important to note with character assessment or attitude assessment is spiritual growth is one of those things that's super slow. It's the slowest of all growths. Okay, so we also need to have patience. I, I was telling Anna uh, in the meeting, he's talking about reflecting on what Jesus, our Jesus story, and I was just thinking about how patient God has been with me. Like, he is so patient. I'm so slow. I'm so thick-headed and stubborn and just annoying. Like, I, if I was God, I'd be like, see you later. <laughs> so annoying, right? But the reality is he's so patient, he's so gentle, he's kind, and that kindness draws us to himself. And so with this, we want to be and help and draw people to, to God and to his character and to his ways. And so it's not like, you're wrong, you're bad. It's like, look, we're all going on this journey together. How can I help you move closer to Jesus? How can I help you see what the Bible says and, and, and walk that out. I want to walk alongside of you doing that. And that's what, so this is not a thing that happens until the end as well. Because that's, and this is super vague, like it's so like, okay, um, has the student consistently examined their own values and character to identify those that are not consistent with biblical principles? Oh, uh, that's really big. That's a big thing. Like, but that's something that we would see over and over and over again throughout every week in our one-on-ones, um, in our communications with each other. And how do we do that? Well, if you flip again to this page, it looks like this. We're still working on this document. This is where we're at so far with it. We're not sure that this is how we want to do this, but um, it's, it's, been, it's, it's a work in progress and we're going to try. Okay, but what it is, is it's things that, in different areas, what does it look like to display the character of God, or a, a godly character, okay, or an attitude, your attitude. So, for example, in the classroom, and with your homework, do you display openness and humility in times of application? Right, and these are going back to values, right? What, out of my heart, I am longing, I'm hungering for God, Therefore, when it's time or when there's an opportunity to apply, does that mean I have to do it every time or else fail? No, it's do I see that person being open to God in application times? Yeah? Uh, when I talk to them, hey, how was this week? Man, God just really nailed me on blah, 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 and I was in my room and on my face. Open to God to apply. Right? So it's not, it's not like I'm... I'm judging or I'm looking for why you're doing good or doing bad. It's not about right and wrong. It's about are we displaying godly character? And, 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 and how do I notice those things? How do I value that in other people? And how can I help them move towards being more in that way? And so these are some things that we thought demonstrated that. And it, it's not just me. There's a bunch of other people that are behind this document. YOM leaders and things like that. It's not just like, oh, we came up with this. We did not come up with this. I'm not that smart. Um, but it's a tool that has been used in other places that we, we were bringing in to see if it would be useful for us here and see if it's a fit. If it's not a fit, we're, we're happy. We're going to adjust it. If it doesn't work out for this school, we'll figure out another way to do that. But what it is is a tool to help 
move us in that direction. Yeah? So that there's some clear boundaries. It's not just really subjective like, yeah, sure, they're all right. Check. Right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think, I think they're okay. They were okay when they got here, and they're okay when they're leaving, so, yep. <laughs> you know? Uh, it's a way to actually help bring people along because we want it's not just the people who have problems that we want to work with it's everybody we want everybody to be growing closer to God so this is a way to help look for and model so again read these because <laughs> we're modeling all of this too um, as staff are we modeling these things are we displaying humility openness are we caring for other people's possessions are we demonstrating generosity so I when I look at this list I ask myself these questions too it's not about them and us again and I'm like here with my checklist Jenny Kim yeah, I don't know uh, I just check 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 right it's like am I am I modeling this am I walking this so that I have the authority to walk people along with that right it's about our authority in God not about a checklist and like a hawk check 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 okay does that make sense how that works so there's these different areas and you can see here as well into relationships and then there's a there is a number scale because we somehow have to give people a grade for this uh, and so the number scale, it, it's never going to be perfect. And it's so frustrating sometimes to put numbers on people. Um, and, and that's part of the brokenness of education. It's part of the fallenness of these kinds of things. But the reality is, is and when we asked, we recently just asked Tom Bloomer, why do we use A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever? Why do we use this? And he says, because we're already weird enough. If other universities couldn't relate to us, if we couldn't give people transcripts with grades, it would be so weird. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to be able to impact other spheres of education and we're, being, we're coming to an agreed level where we say we will do this so that if our students want to go in and get further education, we want to release them to be able to do that so they can impact the field of psychology, so they can get their MDiv, so they can have something that's also recognizable. Um, and so I think, you know what, we can deal with that, right? It's not perfect, we know that. We're not trying to push people down. Again, what we're trying to do is say, you know, here you are in this process and I get it and you're doing really well. And so therefore, I'm gonna give you a, a grade that reflects that, yeah? Here you are in this process. You've moved, you're moving. I'm gonna give you something that reflects it. Maybe you're not doing these skills as well as, um, as I'd like you to be by the end of the, and that means therefore you get a B instead of an A, right? Because here's proficiency. And that's why we've tried to outline what it looks like so that there's actually some levels that we can begin to understand how that would work. So that's not super subjective and kind of like, well, she says yes and he says no. And, and I talked to Andrew, but Andrew gave me an A. So but even if Angie's like, no, you're getting a B, like why is there why is there disunity like it's not that's not healthy so what we're trying to do is create a healthy way to be in a standard so that we're all on the same page and so that it's not like out of 50 students there's so many variations that it's consistent that we can love them we can all care for them we're all looking for similar things we're all modeling the same things we're all on the same page and that's the whole point of this is so that uh, we can really care for them we can care for each other and we can all move towards that same goal yeah awesome and then you can see that there's a uh, ministry teamwork so there's one for ministry as well and teamwork uh, so that's looking at character in, in intercession and worship character and team dynamics character in evangelism and ministry and then there's some categories here that have been left blank because there might be some things that we think of that we haven't thought of yet that are specific to this school uh, that we want to be able to assess uh, in that way and so that so that's there because again like I said this is a tool that's being developed and we want your input we want your feedback we want your input on everything that's happening that everything that's being done because we're not sure how it's gonna look and how but we're trying to create clarity and we're trying to create boundaries so that we know where we're going and how to get there cool and that's basically what assessment is. Yeah. Just um, on the character part, if you, if you look at the, the 
care. Again, these are for us, right, to help us yes. do well. And the students that come into our training want to be discipled, and they want to grow, and they want to move forward, right? And so when we go through here, you can see um, the observation in action. It actually asks you, how do you see them illustrating this in their life? And if it's something that we can't see, then it's something maybe we should ask them about, right? Because we can't always see everything, but then we can talk about it, and it helps us to see areas that we could actually be talking to them about in our discipleship process and seeing where they are in those areas. And if maybe we don't see it because they don't ever consider that. And it's an opportunity then for us to then disciple them, right? And if it's an area where they feel like they struggle in, then there's also their opportunities for growth. And it's our responsibility to think and ask God, how, are my, how am I going to help them next week help them move forward? Or, or asking them. Or asking, yeah, well, asking them how they want to move forward. How do they forward, want to move forward, right? too? And then it's intentional. It's, again, that intentionality within our discipleship as a person holistically right not just this bit or that bit or and people that have a level of maturity and they seem like they're doing good and we get in one-on-ones we're not really sure what to talk about we just talk and they talk and never feel like I'm actually challenging them so much do you know um, but they actually came to grow um, and I say that because I have done a school and Oh, you're doing so great. You're doing so great. And I hear about how great I'm going, but I'm like, but I want to grow. Like, come on, tell me something to like, don't you see anything where I can just like improve and grow? You know, because um, we're hungry to grow. And so this, um, the idea is this will hopefully help us to be a bit more intentional, talk about different things, see if, if there's ways that we can help each other grow. Oh, yes. And so it's not a checklist, but it is also, a, it helps us, it's right, a tool. To, be, to be great disciples, hopefully, as well. Yeah. Yep. Any questions? Any, anybody else want to add? Angie, do you want to add anything about these as a tool? Hey, Chris? Yeah? Do you want to add anything about the tool? Um, one thing I've, I've noticed, because this is really an amazing discipleship tool, and it's also really good just for your own self-assessment to go through and go like, okay, I should be saying, am I doing these things? Because uh, they're going to be really looking to us to, to see how to, how to live out this, this life that we're challenging them to live out. Uh, but one, one of the things that I've done with assessments like these, so these will be available to you guys throughout the, the whole school. Um, and there'll be, there'll be one in the classroom exactly like this packet so that every student has access to this at any point. Yeah. Because they need to know exactly everything that, uh, <laughs> that is expected of them. We want to be clear. This is not a trick, right? We want, we want, this is, this is where we're going and we want you to come too. That's what you signed up for. This is what you signed up for. This is how we're looking at it. And this is how we're going to work together to get there. Yeah. I just think it's even good. One of the things I've done with assessment tools like this is I'll actually take it into a one-on-one -on -one and I'll ask them, how do you think that you're doing in these different areas and go through it with them. And a lot of times they'll be like, oh, I don't think I'm doing very good at this. And they'll, they'll actually score themselves pretty low where you can come in with a ton of encouragement and be like, actually, I've, I've seen you really growing in this. This, yeah. is, this is incredible. But then at the same time, if they're like, man, I think I'm doing amazing in all of these, then you can bring in that mm -hmm. discipleship and be like, well, here's actually what I've seen. Yep. Um, oh, but it's, it's been really cool just in discipleship to bring it in and ask them, how do you think that you're doing in this? You know, do you think you need any help in any of these things? So this is just, it's a really good tool. And we're working with adults who are in charge of their own learning too. Like, these are grown-ups, you're grown-ups, we're grown-ups. Ideally, like I know some people are, you know, at an earlier stage of adulthood than others. Um, but, but we want people to t have ownership of their learning. And we want them to know where they're going. And we want them to be excited about where they're going. And excited about how they're going to get there. And excited about discipleship. And, and that's why we put these things together so that there's a roadmap, clarity, so forth. And I was also thinking that... Um, this is not just something that we do at 101s. We want to be make, we want to make sure that 101s are 101s when we meet them personally. But 
right? Like an assessment is a different time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you don't want to always go to your one on ones and they feel like they're being assessed. Yeah. Like they're having to exclude themselves. Right. So I just want to make that clear yep. that we don't use this as our one on one session. Yeah. This is a one off time when we do like you know, like we'll do it monthly and as we do it that it's a separate time. Somewhere in this packet, which we're going to put grades on, or uh, numbers on, page numbers. So I'm just trying to get in my head, because I don't have experience with DBS. Yeah. So is this assessment what we're doing for a one-on-one, -on -one, which is the same small group of people we're walking with through the whole school? Or is it more like SBS, where you're changing? My understanding before was that the reason that the way... Uh, a, a grading was previously in DBS and you guys have to help me because I wasn't there so I, I want your help and this is what I understand now previously in DBS uh, graders would change because we wanted people to have the opportunity to have different scorers and that was mainly because uh, for standard reasons and helping for uh, so that people weren't just catering their homework to their checker um, uh, that was my understanding of why it was done like that. That came from Yo's model of the SBS. Um, but what I understand now is that we're, because it's such a short course, what we're wanting to provide is consistency of care. Uh, and so what we're going to be doing is your small group will be the group that you're grading, you're having your one-on-ones with, and you're walking through with them. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we're going to be doing. And then you're going to be walking through with them. And then you're going to be walking through with them. And then you're going to be walking through with them. And then you're going to be walking through with them. And then there'll be other opportunities where uh, different small groups will be combined for different things. Um, for community building or just because the school's so big that sometimes we'll just get into two small groups and share with each other. Um, and then, you know, uh, there'll be corporate times where, and so they'll be mixing and matching and maybe for Bible reading, we'll get a couple of small groups together and you'll be together for that week and then maybe next week we'll swap everybody around. And so that people are getting to know each other outside of lecture time or content input time, but that there's a consistency of care with one-on-ones and with marking and, and grading and things like that, there's a consist we want to provide a consistency of discipleship and care. And so my understanding, and I don't know how or what that will look like yet, is that these guys are going to get together and they're really going to consider the students that are on the school, they're going to ask the Lord who, do, who should go where and how and whatnot. But that can't be done until a little bit later. So that's my understanding so far. Do you, you other input? Please help me. Is that is that is that true? Okay, great. Shoo. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So somewhere in this document, there should be a maybe it's not in this particular one, and if it's not, then we need to add it in there. But there should be a document that talks about assessments and how assessment works, and that's another thing that's going to be given to the students. The same little pep talk that I just gave to you, I'm I'm going to give well, somebody will give to the students uh, in the school so that they feel secure in how, oh, here it is. It's after the schedules. Uh, there's a, it should, it, this, and read through this document because we will, oh, you were supposed to read it. Did you read it? Yeah. Uh, all three of you. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. So, so then what I'm talking about, this should match this. Right, the document that you read, this should match what I just said. Um, is there any other thoughts, feedback, questions regarding this? Because you've read it. Um, I read, I mean, I, I read everything that we're supposed to read last night, but this, on this page of assessments, I'm doing a little uh, introduction to what. Yeah. That was my question. What the heck are you talking about? It just seemed like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, gobbledy psychology, whatever. It, just, it didn't really seem like yeah. it had anything really that much to do with the school. Okay, great. So maybe you could explain how all this fits together. So under the what section specifically? Right, that very first paragraph under the what before you get to knowledge. Yeah. What does that paragraph mean? So basically that's what I just explained. So, so we want to help people get equipped in those three areas. That's the core of the University of the Nations. Those are the, the three 
legs that the university is sitting upon, those three legs. And so what this is saying is the objective or the main objective for a course is to equip people for a task, right? That's the skill based and the knowledge on how to do that how to complete that task. So riding a bicycle, well, introduction 101, here's a bicycle. This is a pedal, this is the knowledge part, right? This is how it moves, this is what a wheel does, um, this is how you turn it, that's all knowledge. Okay, now we're gonna go practice it, that's the skill set, right? And, we, and then we also, the personal development is the third part that comes into there. So what we wanna ask at the end of the course is, are these students able to do what they came here to learn? And are they able to do that outside of this context once we release them or once they're finished, the 12 weeks is over. And so that's what that means. So what we want to know at the end of the course is, are you better equipped to do what you will need to do in order to fulfill God's calling? Well, they believe they heard the word of the Lord to come to this school because God wanted to give them this stuff that we're teaching them in the DBS. So are they able to do that by the end? That's what we're going for. So this means assessment is those three areas, and that's where we, that's where I went into those three things. Is that helpful? Uh, somewhat. It, it seems like in the past, the goal of the school has been, one, to get all the way through the scripture, which most of the people haven't, to grow in the scripture, to grow in knowledge, you know, to get closer to God in the midst of the school. Yep. Uh, you know, to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Son of God, to become hungrier for the Word of God. Sure. I see and what you it mean. It seems like all of those things are now almost nowhere to be seen, at, at least in this little section here. Sure. I totally understand what you're talking about. I think there's a mis uh, disconnect between the course content materials and how uh, they're being evaluated on those things. So all those things that are actually the goal for the students is in that first packet that I gave you earlier with all those the develop, yeah, that one. That's all the things that you just said. We wrote those all down, those core things uh, that I talked about that were key for only DBS A, B, C, D, E, F, right? Develop Bible, love for the Bible, continual Bible development, um, be able to explain God's character and nature, his plan of redemption, all those things. <clears throat> that's in, that's in that. This is how are we evaluating they understand all that. So this is only under assessment. And so these are the things that uh, we are looking, the, this is how that functions. Does that make sense? It's the how behind the, how do we get them there? How do we get them? We need to get them there in their skill. We need to get them there in their character. We need to get them there in their knowledge. And so that's what this looks at. It looks at the assessment of uh, the end product of the content and skill sets of the school. Yeah? Yeah. Is that any clearer? Yeah, I, I guess my, my, my really only concern is that in the midst of everything we've been handed, yeah. are we going to miss the heart of the school? I, I, think that, I think that right now it's a lot of technical stuff that I'm giving to you guys and equipping that. Uh, this is not how we're going to to train the students. That's not how it will be run or facilitated. But for staff training purposes, there's been a lot of shift in my understanding of the uh, exact ways of how that looks and there's been clarity brought. And so um, my role right now is to help try to explain how we got there. How did we come to these frameworks? How did we come with this document? How are we gonna look at these, uh, these students and how are we gonna make sure that they, they do love God more by the end? How are we gonna ensure that we're giving them all those things that we're saying that we wanna give them? Um, that's my understanding of, of my role for you guys right now in facilitating this time. And so what, what you're saying is so true. We do need to give them the love and the heart and we need to give them uh, the desire and the hunger, but how are we going to know that they got there? Right? Yeah. Um, I think what was done here uh, to put this manual together is these ladies and this um, Andrew and myself and Andrew through phone and, and you know, was integral part of the process was to hear what what the Lord, what, what was the word of the Lord to DBS initially and what Theo was carrying and then 
putting that into words. Mm -hmm. Like up to now, it's been like, okay, let's see how it works. But now, at this time, what we did was we were able to sit together and really put it into it. And one of the elements that God was really sharing with us, and yes, we want our students to read through the Bible. That's very unique to DBS. So we want to keep that element, but then there were that community aspect. So then how do we bring community into DBS? And so then, and that's like where that skill part came about. And then, you know, the character, the character part is essential in the University of the Nation. So then we're being more intentional this time around with assessing character. So even though it looks different, really we, what the same. we did was we yeah. sat with, you know, and and really just put everything that he was carrying them into and, and put them into words. Does that make sense? So they will read through the Bible. They will go and um, find character and nature of God. They will find God's redemptive plan. So those key elements are still be still be part of who we are. Um, mm -hmm. But there are other things that we wanted to be more intentional in. And those are the things that uh, we heard from people, the feedback that, that, I, that we got from people who've done the school, um, these guys who've been leading Andrew in his real heart for seeing these things established. And yo, uh, we got the feedback. These are the things we're weak in. Um, you know, we're really weak in our actual small group uh, because this is a discipleship community, discipleship. We really think the small group is is part of the core, but we haven't been doing that well. How do we actually communicate that? How do we, how do we train better so that we're actually doing the things that we say that DBS is going to do? Does that make sense too? Yeah. Again, I, I'm still somewhat leery that we're going to yeah. miss the heart of it all. Though. Cool. Well, I, and, look, can you? you know, only time will tell as, yeah, as I yeah. see it working out. Absolutely. Can you help us? Then can you help make sure that that still happens right so what i'm asking then is because we need everybody's participation in this mm -hmm. and so this is something that's really on your heart and i see your heart for that and and wanting to make sure that god's heart is fully communicated in the school can you help then make sure with the leaders like if you have concerns come and like share with angie and and chris and andrew because they're going to make sure that that's actually happening. And if you feel like, man, this week we missed the heart of God. Like, that's where we want you guys to contribute, okay? So, so Randy's modeling to us that there's something that he really cares about with the school. And I think that all of us have that love um, for different parts or different aspects. And we see different parts and different aspects. And that's how, as a staff, we're going to support these guys in facilitating it in this time. Um, because we want to make sure we don't miss anything. And I, I so thank you for bringing that and, and bringing that element with us and making sure that help us through that in this time, right? Yeah. Thank. Now, I, I'm not I'm not an education guy. <laughs> my my wife is. I'm not even a goal person. <laughs> I'm, I'm just yeah. you know my heart. Well, you don't know me, but like I don't. A, a I don't. couple of these people do it. My heart has always just been hungry. Yeah. And, awesome. And I don't want it to become a sterile, yeah. oh, we've met the goal. Awesome. Oh, yeah. we've done this. We've totally. accomplished mm -hmm. all of our new observations. Yeah. We've done, you know, and yeah. still have people who at the end of the school don't really know God much better than when they walked in. Totally. The I hear you. I fully hear you. Did okay. you want to? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that's why we want to have more discussion times, too. Mm -hmm. Because when we have those discussion times, it makes it real for them, where before we've only had like you know short amount of time in our reading groups to actually process what was going on and so i think this will cultivate even more hunger because they're going to be like oh my gosh my worldview yeah it may not line up with what the bible says and so in that they can then go and process it more with other people mm -hmm. and then that brings even more hunger to know more of the word so that they can align with that mm -hmm. and then when we talk about the covenants it's going to be like Okay, like I know we've had that assignment in the past, but it's really going to be like asking them to search their hearts for like covenants they've made and what covenants they want to make in the future and how that's going to impact their lives mm -hmm. and what those covenants meant for God in that time when he was making that with the people. And yeah. so when they're discussing those kind of things, I think that that hunger mm -hmm. is going to be birthed out of that even mm -hmm. more because they're, they're processing it with other people and they're getting other people's imp input and it's sparking more interest for them to know more what they believe and what they, how they see the Bible. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Do you want That's to my hope too? for the school. 
And if, if we can help facilitate that, mm -hmm. then that's what we want to see. Yep. Because I really, I want people to have the heart and the hunger to 